guys, it's Di, and I wanted to share our uppercase letter craft project that we did for the first 26 weeks of preschool at home. And this is something that is suitable for toddlers, preschoolers, and Bella really, really enjoyed doing this project at ages two and a half, three years old. I had to do all of the cutting for these, but I basically let her put the pieces together, and especially when she was closer to two and a half, it was a great way just to talk about the different letters and get her thinking about the letters and different words that started with that letter. And all in all, just a super fun project. So I would totally recommend this. I'm going to be posting on my blog pictures of each of the 26 uppercase letters. And for the last part of the year, we're going to be working on the lowercase. So I'll try to do this again whenever we get done with the lowercase letters. But I wanted to go ahead and show you the uppercase letters and actually do a video showing you each craft that we did and kind of the concept behind it. And then also kind of give you our thoughts on that letter and that sort of thing. So I will just go ahead and start and go through starting at A. So this is A is for alligator, and there are a number of different variations you can do for A, but I really love this one. Even though it has the letter turned sideways, she was able to recognize the letter very, very quickly with this one, and this was actually one of the first ones that we did, and also ended up being one of my favorites. She loved putting the teeth on there, and it was a simple, simple cutting project. You can see, really, you only have to cut out the A, and then some triangles for the teeth, and then triangles for the eyes, so talking about triangles the same week is also a great project idea and this was one of our favorites that we did. Next is the letter B and we did B is for bear. This again just had small pieces that needed to get glued on and this was easy for her to understand. This was probably about midway through our preschool at home and she really liked this one especially putting together the ears. So this is our B is for bear. Next is C is for cat and I did debate about which way to do this one. In the end I decided to turn the C sideways so that the C was making his legs and there are a couple different variations that you can do this if you'd rather have the C going upright so it's more in its correct position but all in all I thought that this one was cute and we have a black cat here at home so she enjoyed making this one as well. Next is D is for dog and I think that this one turned out very cute. I had wisened up by the time that we got to this letter. This was more towards the end and I did the whiskers with the construction paper. I'll show you why on some later letters that were actually toward the beginning of our project series. But I thought this one was great and it was easy for her to understand that the face needed to go up here and then put his tail down here at the bottom. Next is E is for elephant. This one we probably could have gone a little bit more in depth with adding some legs and adding a tail, but if I remember we were a bit time crunched this week. So we've definitely got the point across with having the E uh, elephant colored with the nose and the elephant ears, and it still was a great project for E week. Next is F is for Fox, and now you'll actually probably notice that this is different than the F is for Fox project that we did in the video that is shown for Preschool at Home that week. I actually had to remake this one. This is the only letter out of all the letters that for some reason had gotten misplaced or shuffled in with other artwork, and I unfortunately could not find our original one whenever we were making these, but this is basically the same thing as the week that we made it, and the only thing I added when I redid this one is I put the white on the tail Whenever we did it before, we just had basically a brown tail, and so I went ahead and added the white. This is a little accent, so this is F is for fox. Next is G is for giraffe, and this was one of my favorites. Now, I did go ahead and color this on there, and I cannot remember whether I did it before she glued it down or afterwards, but I did color the giraffe uh, pieces on there and I did also do any sort of marker work that you see on these I did that um, Bella did all the placement of putting the legs and everything on here and this is the mama giraffe we actually did two G's and she did a little baby giraffe as well and this is absolutely a super adorable project this one had a little bit more input for me obviously because giraffes are one of my favorite animals and it's a little bit more detailed but for an older child four or five they could even do all of the coloring probably and put their own flair on it as well. Next is H is for horse. This was another easy cutting week and Bella loved the fringe on the hair and the fringe on the tails. That went over great with the two and a half to three year old and so this was another easy one for her to figure out where all the pieces need to get glued and I think she used a lot of glue on this one because it rolls up for some reason but this is H is for horse. Next is I is for ice cream, and this is one of our favorite ones. We did this toward the beginning of our art projects, and this is obviously one of Isabel's favorites because it starts with her name. We had a very fun week, I week. 
And so ice cream, we just basically glued the eye down. I did go ahead and put these stripes on there after she glued it. And then she just glued this on the top and put the little sprinkles wherever she wanted them. So this is her eyes for ice cream. Next is J is for Jaguar. And she was very into Jaguars this week. She was reading the Rumble and Jungle book that has Jaguars in it. And I did, again, like the giraffe, draw all the little things for her. When she gets a little bit older, if we repeat any of these, I'll let her do the coloring on those portions. But she thought that this was a fun project. And this is J is for Jaguar. Next is K is for kangaroo, and she especially liked the little pouch. She was very intent on putting the pouch a lot of different places, so I had to kind of get it back into the middle of the K, but other than that, um, this one was easy for her to conceptually figure out where the faces needed to go and that sort of thing, and this is our K is for kangaroo. Next is L is for Lion, and one of her favorite parts about doing this one was putting the fringe around the face and placing all of those, and she actually did place every single one of those, and also the tail, and there's a little extra piece of tail right there. So she did a great job with placement on that stuff, and this was a fun project as well. Got his little feet down there at the bottom, and this is L is for Lion. Next up is M is for Mouse, and in week for us was kind of right at the beginning, I believe it was week five of Preschool at Home, so this was one of the first ones that we did of the uh, art projects that had to do with the letters. The only thing I would suggest changing about this one is I would go ahead and do the whiskers in a construction paper. In fact, this may be the only one that I go back and kind of alter a little bit from what Bella did on it uh, because the pipe cleaners were fun for her to work with. Kind of problematic when you're hanging them up on the wall and just for the longevity of it. The glue didn't really seem to hold them very well and so I tried to go back in and put tape on there and they just, they fall off and they're kind of problematic. So for the future, this is kind of what sparked the idea that I should just go ahead and do the whiskers and construction paper too. So this is, I believe, the only one that we use pipe cleaners on after this week since it was so early on. And that was my only suggestion on this to change that portion. Next is N is for nest. And we just tried to make it look like a tree with her N. And then she loved any project that had these little tiny pieces where she got to glue them wherever she wanted. She loved those. And we just put our little bluebird up there. And that is N is for nest. Next is O is for Owl, and I think that this one was a big hit. She was very into owls at this time, and had just gotten a little owl basket and that sort of thing. So we made the O his tummy, and she had a very easy time figuring out where the head needed to go and the feet needed to go. This was a very easy one to cut out and an easy one for her to glue together. So this is O is for Owl. The next one is P is for Parrot, and this is another one of my favorites. I love the bright colors on this one. This, again, was another easy one for me to cut out and easy for her to figure out where she needed to place everything with minimal input from me. So this is P is for Parrot. Next is Q is for quail. This was another easy cutout portion, another easy one that just has, you know, big pieces for her to figure out where to glue on. And so Q is for quail. It was a quick and easy project. R is for rabbit. We did this around Easter week and this was one of the last ones that we used the pipe cleaners on. Again, I would just say to go back and change those over to construction paper or would just my suggestion would be use construction paper if you're doing these to start out. She loved the little cotton ball tail and this of course worked perfect for Easter so this is R is for rabbit. The next one is S is for Snail, and this was a really fun one. She especially liked that it had the pink and the green on it, which are two colors that actually weren't used very much in these letter projects, so she especially liked the pink. It was very easy to cut out, and again, I just had to help with the drawing of the mouth and the drawing on the shell, but she liked doing S as for Snail. Next is T is for tree, and I believe this is probably one of her favorites. She really loved this one. She especially loved these projects where she could kind of place the papers wherever she wanted. So these leaves were a big hit. She could just place them around. It was very easy for me to conceptually explain that this was going to be the trunk of the tree and then to put all of her leaves up here. So this one is a great one for spring as well, and this is T is for tree. Next we have U is for Umbrella, also would probably be a great one for spring, and we just tried to kind of make this like the stem of the umbrella, if that kind of transfers there. She loved putting the raindrops on there, and again on this one I just had to draw those lines on there, but again for an older child, four or five year old, um, they might be able to do a little bit more with the lines and the coloring and that sort of thing. 
Next up is V is for vase, and I had to cut out a few more things here, but she actually did all the placement as far as putting the stems in, putting the leaves on, and putting the flowers together. I thought that she did a great job on this one, and I just basically explained the concept of the vase, put the flowers inside, and she just went right to it. So this one is a cute one, V is for vase. This is another early on one that we did. You can tell that the pink is actually starting to kind of yellow, but this is... W is for watermelon, and Bella really loved making this one, and she also drew all the different watermelon pieces on there. You can see that some of our seeds ended up being long lines, but this was a fun one to do, and um, it was one of the earlier ones that we did, so I'd probably do a few things differently and then maybe look, make it a little bit smaller, um, but this is W is for watermelon. Next up, we have X is for xylophone, and she loved doing this one. She loved placing these on there. I let her decide where she wanted to put the little uh, tappers on there, and she decided she wanted to put them right on the center. And then it was fun because she wanted to play with it afterwards, and she pretended that she was playing music on them. So this was a very cute one to watch her with. This is X is for xylophone. Next up, we have Y is for yak, and I really like this one. I think that he's really cute. He maybe had a little bit more detail, and this one was a little bit harder for me to explain to her where everything kind of went. I don't know if she's ever seen a yak at, like, the zoo or something, but um, we put his little hair up there, and this is Y is for yak. And last but not least, this is Z is for Zebra. And this was another one of her favorites, I think, because again, the stripes, she could just go ahead and place them wherever she wanted. It had the fringe that she really seems to like. And this was just a really fun project. This was more towards the end for us. I can't remember what letter we ended on. Week 26, I think it was more towards the end. Um, but this is a really fun one. And of course, Z is for Zebra is a great word to end on as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing our 26 alphabet letter projects for preschoolers. They were very fun and easy to make with just a little bit of help from me cutting out things and she was able to put them all together. It was a great way to talk about letters, talk about words, and just get the introduction to the alphabet started. So let me know if you have any questions down below. We'll be sure to share our lowercase letters when those are finished at the end of the year. Be sure to check out my blog, Mom's Got a Brand New Bag, for all the pictures in the full collage of the different letters together. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.